If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. And today, I thought I would give you guys a small tutorial on how I do one of the keyframing sessions in one of our videos. So Frank sends me some stuff that I want to animate, and instead of going to After Effects, I'm going to do it all in Premiere. Now, this is not a beginner tutorial, per se. This is a little more intermediate, but this should show you some cool concepts and ideas on not having to go into After Effects all the time and doing some simple animations within Premiere. Now this section right here is actually a smaller section of a video that I just shot that's almost two hours of me showing you entirely everything that I do to edit a Pull My Focus video. From where to get music, to how to put the music in, to color, to all these little keyframe effects and uh, different kind of things, different techniques that'll speed up your editing process, which then this, and this literally shows you how we go through our entire editing process here at Pull My Focus. Now, if you're a patron of ours, you're getting that right now. So just for a dollar a month, you can get some of these added benefits out of our channel. But for you guys, I'm pulling probably the meat and potatoes out of this video, which is the keyframing section to show you how to do simple animations within Premiere. So here we go, three, two, one, hit it. Take these letters. They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Okay, so for this moment, we have, he, Frank is creating kind of this visual reference of stairs, and then the stairs come together, and then the stairs form stairs. Okay, so these three frames are just, you know, what it should be first, and then there, and then here, and, and what part of the audio it should happen. So these are basically my, you know, my references. So I need to make this interesting. Now, one thing I would do, every single episode we do, I try and do something in After Effects. That makes me get more familiar with After Effects and motion graphics, and that kind of forces me to get something done. So I'll pick something that can be done in After Effects. This time I'm not gonna do it in After Effects because I wanna stay in Premiere and show you guys how you can still do compelling motion graphics moves in Premiere with a little ingenuity and thinking. So we won't do that. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking we will stick with, uh, maybe we'll stick with the text background or maybe we'll do this. Cause the first thing I want to do is create these. The first thing I'm thinking about is just creating these one, two, and three and what background they're going to go on. So let me highlight all these. And if I hold alt and hit the up arrow, it moves them up, uh, one line in the, in the timeline. All right, and now I'm gonna to go to my selects, and that, this is tricky because I have so many, uh, I usually can look at two timelines at the same time, but where, what am I looking for? I just completely forgot. Oh yeah, this background. <laughs> I need this background. So I'm gonna copy it, come back to here, and when I use the up arrow and the down arrow, it jumps me from the uh, start of each clip. As long as this is highlighted and on, the track targeting is on, it'll move me, step me through. So I'm gonna be here, then I wanna target, uh, uh, yeah, that always happens. Then I wanna target this track so that when I paste the clip that I just brought in, paste in there. And so now we have, that's my background, and I'm, I'm gonna mess with it in a little later. But first it's just stairs, random stairs, right? So let's see. What has to happen is the word stairs first starts off scrambled, then it's then it floats into place as stairs, right? And then they stagger each, each other like stairs. Uh, but in order to create a little more movement than just static letters, I want them to kind of float, slowly rotate where they sit first. So let's try that. All right. So I want to think about this in a certain way. So I'm going to make each letter its own composition. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go to a my selects timeline, which is kind of like my garbage timeline. This is my timeline that I can just do a bunch of junk on. And I won't, uh, I won't affect my main timeline. So I'm going to grab this, a copy of that. And then let's just start putting the letters down, so S. S for stairs, 
All right. Um, we're going to make this bigger. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it. Let's make it 300. Picking a number. Let's set the anchor point, which I can do by grabbing this little plus sign to right in the middle. Right. So now when I rotate it, it rotates over its anchor point mostly. Right. For the most part. Okay, and then I'm going to center it up in the frame. And there's my S. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing for T A I R S. Um, let's see, I want to create my rotation animation and basically copy that. Yeah. So, how long? Let's see, how long is this clip here? It is five seconds. So let's just for S and G's make this clip five seconds. That's 10 seconds. There we go. Somewhere roughly around that. I'll make it exactly five seconds. You can tell that I was creating, uh, making it five seconds because when I, I can see duration right there. Yeah. So this is very organic right now, the way I'm doing this. And it's typically the way I'll, I'll do these episodes. I'll just figure out a way to organically make it, but the concepts are still there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to just rotate it, all right? And I want it to end, I want it to end as a regular S, um, but I want it to begin rotated. So I'm just going to set my end, end frame right now. And at this level, I think I can use rotation and position here. So let's do that. Let's uh, keyframe rotation. I'm actually not gonna mess with position and scale because they're gonna say the same, rotation. Rotation ends here. Not yet, you'll see, you'll see. It's not at the end of the frame, but I'll drag it there. But I like to keep my keyframes at the end of the beginning, kind of inside the work area so I can get, grab them. And then I'm gonna come back here and let's just, rotate it backwards a few so that when we go through it it does this um maybe slower much slower so instead of negative 324 let's go to negative 180 so that's a slower rotation all right that's it for that um I don't necessarily want to ease out of this. I just want to start. So I'm going to have it drag that there. And I'm going to say ease in to this point here at the end so that when you see it finally come to the end, it's it kind of softly gets there. Did you see how it kind of slowed down? All right. So now I have rotation on the S. So big deal. So what? You have a rotation on the S. Uh, that, that, uh, that anchor point is bothering me a little. I move my anchor point a little bit to there. That's better. Okay. Let's try this. So I'm going to drag this S all the way up. S, T. Notice I'm copying, right? I'm going to turn off that layer for a second. I'm copying. I'm highlighting it. And I'm putting a new letter. That's my T. I'm copying. Turn that one off. Also, you don't have to turn them off. You can just kind of stagger them. You can stagger them like stairs. ST. This will be A. A. So if you watch, if I line them up again, I have three letters that are... Oh, I got to turn these on. Boop, boop. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this will be I. Double click. I. This will be R. Double click R. And I already have I already have another S. All I need is stare. So great. I have five letters that are rotating in exactly the same way. Um, <laughs> but the trick the trick is what I'm doing is I'm segmenting the individual movement elements. Okay, because I know I want them to rotate the, almost the whole time until they settle. So 
I just set them all up as individual pieces that rotate already. So now I'll show you what I'm going to do with these. Um, and for this, I think I'm going to uh, take this selects timeline out and maybe drag it to here. Will that work? Yeah. So now I have kind of a double timeline thing going on. So now I can see both my timelines. Like I said before, I use three screens. So this is usually on for another screen. So here I am, right? I know what this has to be and I know, so I'm going to get rid of it. It has to settle to stairs. Okay. So grabbing, uh, let me shrink this down because I don't need audio on this. So here's my stairs. So I'll grab S-T-A-R-R -R and just drag them to here. Boom. All right. Let me shrink this down a little bit. S-T-A-R. Good, good, great, great. Whatever. Who cares? Let's move these around. So I'm going to use the, I need one more S. I almost forgot. I'm going to drag all these up and give me my last S. Uh, duplicate it. Duplicate it. So that's an alt. Drag S. All right. Using uh, the mo the motion, right, which is the entire frame. Notice how it's highlighting the entire frame. That's as if this is an entire frame, but the frame only ex only consists of the S. So when I move it around, I can move it like that. Yeah. Um, actually, let me get that. Let me get that back. Uh, that reference. I need that back. What I can do is uh, go to this guy, right click it, and say Reveal in Project. And just find where he put all those guys. See how it's right here? If I look at them like this, uh, oops, wait. If I look at them like, command double click will open it there. Show me frames. Good. This one right here. I want this back for a second uh, so I can see it. And I actually can do this, I can set an opacity on it. If I go opacity, uh, I can make it. I can make it screen mode, boom, and then set the opacity down. How come that didn't work? Normal. Where am I? Oh, I'm not even looking at it. Sorry, <laughs> it's right here. Uh, always, always be mindful of where your where your timeline cursor is. Uh, I don't need to set it to screen. I can just keep it on normal. Normal. Bring it up a little. So now I can kind of see where the S T A I R S. So that means I can go here, go motion, S. I'll put this first S here. That's a fun spot. Now, what I'm going to do is actually rotate the entire uh, thing. Is that going to work? No, because they all end. No, that'll work. That'll work. So I'm going to rotate that into that orientation. Take the T. Oh, be sure not to grab just the T element, but grab the motion element of the T. You guys saw what that was. Um, that was me clicking on, like the A is next. I don't want to just try and grab the A because I'm going to grab the, the, the text element. I want to go A, motion. See how it highlights it? And then grab the element. And then I'm going to spin this around. Oops. Sometimes you'll do that. You just undo. That's what makes this a little tricky. Motion. Make sure your rotate is on. Flip it upside down. Put it there. I motion. Where's the I? I can't see S. T. Must be underneath there. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. R motion. There's the R down here. I'm tilt it a little bit. And then the last S motion. Where am I at? 15 minutes. Okay. Keeping keeping track of my time, people. Keeping track of my time. Don't want to go too long. Well, this, this is for the patron, patrons right now. So relax, sit back, and watch. I motion. Now I can move my eye in. And the eye is rotated like uh, this. Boom. All right. So here's what I end up with. If I turn that off, here's what I end up Take with. Take these letters. They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. All right, cool. So far, so good. I might want to have them rotate slower, but I think this is okay. And actually, now I want to 
move them around myself a little bit. Um, and you know, so here's what's fun. They're already rotating, so I don't have to worry about that. So now I can simply move them around. Uh, this S here. All right. And I can do some funky things to them if I want. I put, put some effects on them. But take these see. letters. They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Compose them into a line. Okay, so this is good. Compose them into a line. I kind of changed my mind. I want them to be done when he says compose them into a line. This is where I want it to be done and say says stairs. So right here, I'm gonna uh, I'm actually gonna rate stretch these out because if I just stretch the clips out, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna stop moving. Here I'll show you. If I just stretch the clips themselves to that point, uh, and I'm gonna put a marker here. So hit that clip and hit M on the keyboard. So I have a marker. I don't. So I don't have to ever scrub to that spot again. I can go right there to that spot. So like I said, if I just drag the clips out, they're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Compose them into a line. Uh, that looks good. So so what I was gonna say is, they stop they stop their their rotation a little early for me. And that's because you just drag the clip out. If you look at the clip, the, the keyframe is not changed. You're just making the clip longer. So what I will do actually, just to do it, I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna rate stretch these to that point. And you hit my R on my keyboard. Now when I rate stretch them, that key, last keyframe, go V and if you look, it's, it's still at the end where it needs to be because I rate stretched it and that made everything the rotation Take actually a lot slower. They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Compose them into. Okay, so now we're at compose them into a line. And now I'm gonna, now I'm actually going to drag this out a little more to about there. Now he says, compose them into a line. From here, now I'm gonna zip them all into their uh, stair state. Here's compose, them, compose into them, a them into a line. Compose them into a line. So by the time we get to comp, I should start to uh, uh, move them. So taking the first S, now I'm on motion again. I'm going to go position. That's my first position. And then here I'm going to say compose them into a line. Compose them into a line. Let's mark that spot too, because I, I hit undo, so I lost my marker. Compose them into a line. Should take this guy and maybe put him here. And then I also have to rotate it the rest of the way. So let's put it here. And then let's rotate it. So actually, I'm going to back up one because I need position and rotation as keyframes. That's going to sit here. And rotation. Your disk is almost full. Wow. I may need to go look at that. Uh, I'm going to do one, and then I'll show you guys how I did the rest. So here we go. Let me close that. And compose them into a line. Into a line. And compose them into a line. Boop. That's where they should be. The rotation should be back to correct. So that would be here. Right. And the position should be here. About there. And once again, I'm going to use my ease. Um, I'll use ease on rotation, ease out, ease in. One thing I always do when I'm starting to mess with keyframes, I save a lot, even though it auto saves. Sometimes if you're in the middle of an auto save, uh, it could break stuff, <laughs> which is kind of funky. So now I have that first S. Compose them into a line. 
and arrange them in a specific Okay. So as you can see, it kind of floats over. It kind of floats over into its spot. So let me do the rest. S, now we're gonna do T, and um, this is where markers come in really well, because I want all the actions to start at the first part and end at the last part. So I'm gonna mark the first, the start and the end down on that clip. So now if I hold shift, I can go snap to both those spots. So hold, boom, T. We're gonna go position rotation as a start point. We're gonna snap to the next. We're gonna go, now when we move it, actually I'll fix rotation first. When we rotate it, the T is, well actually the T is fine. So I'm gonna move it to where it's supposed to be as T. And I can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to adjust these later also. Um, ST, and then I'm going to do the A. Once again, I'm going to just shift drag over to my markers. Go to my A's motion. My A position and rotation. I mark those. Go to the end point. And then position. I move. I use motion, so I position the A to about here and I'm going to finish the rotation you just drag it and since that anchor point is a little off I'm just gonna fix the motion a little position all right for position I'm going to ease out and ease into the final spot which makes that look like this compose them into a line and arrange them in a specific All right. So as you can see, it's not exactly centered. And there's an easy way to fix this also. It just uh, it just means it just means creating a comp cre uh, creating another composition out of this whole thing, creating a nest, what's called a nest. So I can move them as a group. So now here's what we got. Take these letters. They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Compose them into a line and arrange them in a specific order and they form a word with meaning. Now arrange them in a way that conveys additional meaning. Okay, so we're pretty much there. Stairs. We have more keyframing to go and I do want to fix fix up some stuff. So let's fix up the T. And that's the final location of each, each one. So the final position of the T. You gotta make sure that you're, you're clicked in all the right spots. Everything has to be the right, like the right click. I'm gonna make these, put these a little closer to each other. And then the A, because then you're setting the wrong, um, Key points. You're creating new key points if you don't make sure that your key point is where you want it to be when you want to move your point. All right. Every time I do this, I'm hitting the clip I want, and then I'm making sure that I'm on the keyframe I want, and then I'm going to motion and I'm positioning because that overwrites the old keyframe instead of creating a new one. Because if you're one frame off, you will create a new keyframe. Click it. Make sure I'm still there. I'm still there. Motion. Move my R over a little. And then finally, my last S. Motion. And for this, I noticed that I didn't ease out. So let's do ease out and ease in. All right, so here we go. Take these letters. They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Compose them into a line and arrange them in a specific order. Okay, cool, and arrange them into a specific order. That means we can get rid of this, and if I just extend these clips, it just sits there like that. Arrange them in a specific order, and they form a word with meaning. And there we have it. So the whole thing. Take these letters. 
They're scattered about and have no meaning except chaos. Compose them into a line and arrange them in a specific order and they form a word with meaning. That's the kind of in and out of keyframes. It takes a little practice. It takes a lot of practice actually and just keeping in track. Once, I, once again, I would probably have done that in After Effects, but since you can get away with it in Premiere, it's easier to stay in Premiere and do some of these more simple animatics. More involved animatics are gonna require a better program or a program more suited towards that. I think that's it. So thanks for watching. If you're, once again, if you uh, like what we're doing and you'd like to see more, actually, if you'd like to see the full, almost unedited version of this tutorial, it's a lot longer than what's on YouTube. Um, and I go into a lot more detail, just for a single dollar a month, if you become a patron on Patreon, you can have access to all the stuff that we throw up there and more stuff. Uh, also, we have courses, longer courses. I have a course that's up about uh, audio in Premiere Pro. Uh, Frank is coming up with a course on uh, videography. Check out pixelvalley.com forward slash courses. <laughs> it's right in my select bin and I forgot what it's called uh, for more information about that. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Edit. Go edit. Go practice. Fifth cup of tea.